Hi, everyone. I'm Li Cheng. And Jason Lau. Thank you for coming to our presentation. Compared to traditional RTO level developing, high level synthesis significantly boosts the efficiency of hardware design. However, HO's designs very often fail to reach the specified frequency goal. Due to the black box fashion of HO's compilers, it is very challenging to understand the problems underneath. By analyzing the critical path of a set of large HO's designs, we found that in lots of cases, the timing issues are related to broadcast structures. Here we show some representative broadcasts in HOS generated designs. For one genomic accelerator, there are lots of local broadcasts as shown. For this matrix multiplication design that spines all the three dies of the AWS data center at PGA, we observe broadcasts that reach across the whole chip. For one stencil computing accelerator, we also observe the broadcast of signals across multiple dyes of the large data center level at PGA. To address the broadcast issues, we propose concise and effective solutions, which help improve the final frequency significantly, even for very large real world designs. We are communicating with Xilinx and the part of our results will be incorporated soon into the HOS compiler. Next, I'll classify the common broadcast structures in HOS designs. We will talk about data broadcast and two type of control broadcast. Data broadcasts are usually hidden in the user code. For example, when we unroll loop, some variables may be used by every instance of the unroll loop body. Such broadcast will lead to additional wire delay, which is not captured by the delay estimation model of HOS. As a result, the scheduling may be interfered and the result may be suboptimum. The same applies when users design, define a large buffer, which seems an entity logically, but will be mapped to scattered VRAM units physically. Now let's turn to control broadcasts, which are transparently inferred by the compiler as part of the control logic. The first case is the broadcast of flow control signals for pipeline. When the pipeline needs to interact with external flow control interface, such as FIFO, the pipeline must stop writing data when the FIFO is full or stop reading when empty. A commonly used and simple scheme is to broadcast the store signal to every element of the pipeline and store the entire data path altogether. However, such strategy clearly will lead to tremendous broadcast when the size of the pipeline scales up. Another scenario is about synchronization. The HOS compiler will try to infer parallelism from the input sequential code. To guarantee correctness, it will introduce synchronization logic for the concurrent module. In this example, multiple PEs are scheduled to execute concurrently. Meanwhile, the synchronization first involves a reduction, union together the quote, quote, down signals of all PEs. Then it involves a broadcast to spread the signal back to every module to trigger the next operation after all of them are done with previous operation. Obviously, when the number of concurrent modules are large, such control structure calls for more intermediate registering. To briefly sum up, data broadcasts are often implicitly specified in user codes, and they will in disrupt the current delay estimation model of the compiler, especially the scheduling, thus leading to bad timing quality because some, critic, some combination of paths may be too long and there's inadequate registering to break this long combination of paths. Meanwhile, control broadcasts are automatically inferred by the compiler, thus it is even harder to deal with for users. Two common scenarios are the pipeline flow control broadcast and the synchronization broadcast. Thanks Li Cheng for presenting the problems. I'm Jason and I will present our solutions to the frequency challenges. For each broadcast type, 
we propose an optimization to improve its timing quality. This set of methods can lead to better timing of designs generated by HLS tools. For the imperfection in the scheduling of data broadcast, we propose to calibrate the delay estimation. First, we isolate the broadcast skeleton, and then we measure the additional delay. Since a skeleton design holds nothing but broadcast structure, it's supposed to have better timing than the structure in the complex design. We propose to use the timing result to approximate the lower bound of the delay estimation. Using this method, we capture the increasing delay caused by the increasing broadcast factor on different types of operations, while the current tools fail to do so. This small change in the scheduling process leads to huge frequency improvements. Take a real genome sequencing design as an example, where a variable is broadcast to many data paths. The delay of this broadcast is underestimated by current tools. Therefore, the scheduler packs more operations into the same clock cycle and violates the timing constraint. While our approach successfully calibrates the broadcast delay and moves the clock boundary forward. With a more accurate prediction, the timing constraint is less likely to be violated, thus improving the frequency. For pipeline back pressure, we propose to use gate buffers to avoid the broadcast of control signals. The idea is that instead of storing the entire data path, we keep the pipeline always flowing by adding a skid buffer at the end of the pipeline to delay output. On each stage, we add an invalid bit to mark if there is a valid data for processing or not. In case we need to store the structure, we push an invalid bubble to post the processing. When the bubble is appended, the whole structure is not reading data from the upstream. The output of the last stage is stored in the skid buffer so the structure can stop writing to the downstream. When we resume the pipeline, the skid buffer immediately outputs the stored valid results. This structure behaves transparently the same as the previous design, while there is no broadcast. This method does not compromise correctness or performance. You can read our paper for details. Note that the buffer introduces additional area overhead. This buffer must have the pipeline output width. Therefore, we further seek to minimize the overhead. Since the pipeline width is different on each stage, we split the pipeline into multiple parts and add the buffers separately. The optimal configuration is found via dynamic programming. This method also works for pipelines across multiple modules to minimize the rivals between them. For the synchronization broadcast, we remove the redundancy. On the HLS code, we identify the dependency between tasks and remove all unnecessary synchronizations so the tasks can proceed separately. We performed experiments on a set of real applications across multiple domains with different FPGA boards from data center grid to embedded. All these HLS implementations are large designs published on top conferences that provide high performance. Results show that our HLS optimization methods can improve the maximum frequency by 53% on average, with some designs having improvements over 100 MHz. In summary, we classified and analyzed the common broadcast types in HLS. We propose methods that optimize for these broadcast types and achieved significant frequency improvements in real-world designs. Future releases of Vivado HLS will have some of our optimizations. Thanks for having us here and feel free to ask any questions.